Welcome to Jared Kimber's Super Over. I'm the first guy that I mentioned there. This is the second guy, Steve Harmison. Let's talk about this. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to get this right. Yesterday, I believe, India was bowled out for 46. Mm -hmm. Today, 453 runs were scored. What the hell is going on in test cricket? It just shows you, it just shows you that there was quite a few things yesterday. I thought, the, obviously, the, the the ground was underwater for about a week. It didn't help. That didn't help. The pitch is under, under um, sh uh, covers for a, for quite some time. And that doesn't help. The stickiness, the, the, the tackiness of the wicket was, uh, was there and it was evident for everybody to see, the lavish movement. And you know what? When you catch everything, <laughs> the momentum that gives you, the pressure that puts on the opposition is huge. And if Virat Kohli and um, Keir Rahul don't do the sort of, you know, the, the two-step shuffle and move out the way of that one early in against Devon Conway, it might have been a completely different first innings for New Zealand as well. So I thought it was an enthralling day's cricket. I think they've had a good test match so far. And that last ball of the day is, I'm not saying it's cost us potentially a, a great test match and a finish, but I just think now it's going to be doubly different difficult for for India to force a result in their favour. If we would have this conversation a week and a half ago, we would say there's probably no chance that India could win. If we're having this conversation three years ago, you, you would have had me sanctioned for saying that India could win. Obviously, Cole has just gone out, so it's changed a little bit towards the end. But there is a path, if it doesn't rain too much, for India to win. And they were batting to win this game. There's no doubt about that. 100%. 100% they were batting to win this game. Yeah, they're not thugging at the rain. Uh, you take the rain out of the equation. India can win this game. I just think that wicket tonight is a massive body blow to India and a huge lift to, to New Zealand. And when you look at the where the morning session's gone in the last two days, then uh, I think India could afford to lose two wickets, three wickets tomorrow morning, and still potentially get a a three-figure lead for fourth innings. I think that might be difficult now if they lose three quick three quick wickets or three wickets in the morning session. And I can't see them getting 100-plus 100, 100 runs to force a victory. Let's just talk about Ratcher and Ravindra. Uh, you know, we've all seen him make runs before. We know he made runs against the South African D team. Uh, we know he made runs in India in the World Cup. He's a high-quality player that did feel like a different kind of innings, though. Maybe, you know, I don't want to say coming of age because that's John Norman's words, but it was an incredible innings. It was an incredible innings. I thought his balance was unbelievable. As I mentioned on commentary, the, the, the way he transferred his weight from sort of pushing off the front foot to then utilising you know, his balance, body position, heads perfectly still, great for any young kid to watch how you play that sort of horizontal bat, square cut, or you know the pull shot when the bowler drops short, as well as you know that you know let's say again the trigger movement off the front foot and then transferring your weight to keep going all the way forward and the ball goes above the eye line to get yourself in a position early enough to then hit the ball through the offside or hit the ball through the leg side I thought his balance his timing his movements his shot selection I thought everything about that innings was absolutely magnificent uh, I don't I, you know I don't want to say Tim Saldi's old but he did uh, his career did actually overlap with yours. So he's been, he did, yeah, he he's been around for a he while. He is old. He is old. Yeah, <laughs> I'm saying he's old. I look down and think I can't see my toes. So, yeah, he, he is, but what a performer. What a champion performer. I, I, do you know what? He walked to the crease and I said it on commentary. I'm more confident that Tim Southey, against the spin and the way this game set up at this minute in time with a pitch, I'm more confident in him going out there than a Glenn Phillips or a, a Matt Henry because... I know he's going with a plan. I know the plan he's going to go with. He's going to rock on the front foot. He's going to get a stride in. He's going to put his bat out in front of himself. He's going to try and access the ball. And then if he does get in, he's going to be aggressive and he's going to try and put the bowlers on the on the back foot and especially the spin bowlers. I can't understand and still can't understand why Rohit Sharma hasn't bowled Jasper Bumrah. Yeah. I think even the sight and I'm and I'm and I'm talking you're talking about being old, but I'm talking about being somebody who bats nine, ten, eleven, and I'm going. He just warms up. I look over. If Brett Lee show back to what even thinking about bowling and warming up, my back got quicker. And I started playing shots like you'd not believe. Uh, and I think if the sight of Jasper Bummer even coming on to bowl, I think you might have seen a different type of innings from Tim Southey.
if, if India do somehow manage to win this, it's very unlikely, obviously, at the moment. But if India do manage to win this, there will be lots of stories about the fact that they've been bowled out for 46 and they've won. The main story should not be that, though, of course. It should be that Tim Southey outscored them in the first innings and that they won. Um, but just that, that last wicket, that Glenn Phillips nude nut, uh, you know, we, we've been enjoying Glenn Phillips as everyone does when he's in the field, diving after balls he can't possibly stop and, you know, being the most excited person all the way through. But because he bowls a little bit quicker in these sorts of conditions, he does bring out other problems that someone like Ajaz Patel doesn't uh, do. And that was just such a big wicket because at that point, it just looked like the game was just meandering um, to, you know, two down, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I think because of the way he bowls and the pace he bowls at, and you've mentioned a couple of times, the indifference and bounce on this surface, because he's, you know, he's vertically challenged. He's not the biggest lad in the world. And because he's driving it into the pitch, you might get one to stand up. You might get one to roll along the floor. And he did right at the end of the day there. He got a couple to turn, but he got one just to stand up that little bit. And it just bounced and got enough of of the uh, the edge of Virat Kohli. But he is a jack-in-the-box in the field. You know, I mean, I know Tom Cruise does all his stunts for Mission Impossible, but I tell you what, Glenn Phillips has got a good chance of being a stuntman for, for Tom Cruise. They're about the same size, and the majority of the day, he was about he was like, he was the same. He was horizontal for most of the day when he was trying to field the, the cricket ball. He did throw himself around the field, and he does give you a lot of energy in the field when you are in a place like India or the subcontinent when it is very, very tough to keep that energy going because of the heat. We always say it's a big first session. Specifically, I think it's interesting here because 10 wickets have fallen in the first session of this uh, of, of this test match so far and only 13 in the rest of the game. So really, it's, it's obvious that there's something happening for the bowlers in the morning and then it goes. The interesting thing is, yes, you've got a new batter coming to the crease, although they both have to get reset in the morning, uh, but they're going to have a very old soft ball to bowl with. And so they may not get as much out of the surface as they want. They really need to get very early wickets, I think, New Zealand, because if they don't, India's going to go... You can't really slow Safraz Khan down, and they've got lots of quick scorers that they can uh, go to, and they can throw the bat at it, um, India, and get themselves back in. That 25 overs, 30 overs, uh, you know, in that first session is, is huge for where this game's going to go. May not matter as much if it's rainy, but if it's not rainy, that's where it's going to be. Yeah, it is. It, it and the old cliche of that the the next session, the first session, but it is. It's massive. You mentioned ten wickets. I mean, the first session this morning there was 165 runs scored, largely down to the fact that Ravinder and um, and uh, Saudi got going. But there was four wickets, four wickets, 165 runs. If we have that again, and you just have a mirror image of 32 overs in that first session, you have 165 runs because you're going to be throwing the bat because there's going to be obviously more score and play, uh, quick score and players in. But if they do lose five wickets, where does that get us? India four, 40 in front with seven wickets down. Would you take that at tea time with a view that maybe he's eking out another 60 in the middle session? For all out, would you take 200 or would you take 100 if you're India now with the likes of Kuldeep, Ashwin and Jadeja? I think I probably would. Well, I mean, they'd take any chance of winning from here, yeah. wouldn't they? So if they can get in front and give themselves a chance, you never know. Steve Harmison won't be here tomorrow. He's going to the football to get wet. But I'll be back with another Super Over. We'll see you then. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.